seems like I should do a follow-up video. So right after I made my video towards Mr. Repsion, he was busy having a fun time talking and drinking with his YouTube leech buddies. So I waited until he was done. I gave him the benefit of the doubt that he may just come back and respond. He then comes back home, only to do the same exact crap he's been doing. Posting sexually explicit crap and posting about suicide. Somebody didn't learn. That's really a mind blower though. You had such a great time with a bunch of friends hours away from you. You then come back, and you want to kill yourself all over again? Oh, but while he's feeling suicidal and horny, he's playing Battlefield 4 and running some game server. What the fuck is going on in that brain of yours? I also find it funny that the guy who posts suicidal things and supposedly not only wants to but is going to kill himself in the near future responds to a hypothetical question about getting a million dollars. His response was that he'd live in a big house and he'd be surrounded by rare comic books and games. So you mean to tell me the guy that is so caring about others and went to Africa would just buy himself a big house with games and comic books? No donations? And what makes it even more bizarre is why would you even want all those things if you're just going to kill yourself anyway? I mean, I get it you want to live a supposedly happy and fulfilled life, but I thought the very thoughtful and caring and loving about others Daniel Solzbach would want to donate a lot of that to charities or to the unfortunate people in Africa that he himself experienced. Because if you're not happy with the amount of pay you get through YouTube and you're not happy with the amount of fans, the amount of support, the amount of friends, and things you have that you want that leaves you with a temporary smile, What's buying a bunch of comic books and video games and living in your very own mansion gonna do any better? It's like that supposed curse with lottery ticket winners winning millions and then ending up unhappy about their lives or more so, to which they end up killing themselves because of the state of depression they're in. You wanna be that? Even more miserable than you are now? The problem I have here is that what I've noticed in Los Angeles just yesterday, um, a couple who has a daughter about the same age as me who is waiting for their car to get driven up to them. Um, that girl who is my age has everything. Has everything going for her. You know, they have fancy silver and gold cup holders to hold their coffee. Okay? to hold their coffee, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of a pen that has gold trim on it and, and diamonds, and um, the place I'm staying is very, very rich people. This location in California is very, very rich. They have everything set for them. That girl who's my age, who lives with her parents and has everything gone for her, she's never going to have to go through any difficult trials in her life because she has money. Money. Just let me ask you something, Daniel. How do you know that this girl has everything set for her? How do you know, just from a glance, that this girl doesn't have issues? What you're implying to me here is that money can take care of anything, when in fact it doesn't. For example, what if this girl is neglected by her parents? What if her parents argue, fight, don't get along? What if her daddy has a drinking problem and beats his wife? What if this girl is depressed, sad, or maybe she doesn't get everything she wants like you think? And her parents make her work for a lot of it? What if they go bankrupt and the daughter is left to face the truth of the real world and that she won't get everything she wants? You can't make the quick assumption that, because she has money, she'll live some life with no worries. And I mean, so what if these parents want to buy these crazy expensive things? Think about it this way, like I said before, what if they were to go bankrupt? Then these rich people you saw will feel only more stupid and ridiculous for buying such frivolous things when they did have money. They're just budgeting it poorly. It's their own fault. They may learn the error of their ways soon enough. And Daniel, earlier in the video, you mention and go on about filming the boats outside of your hotel and mentioning how all these people own Bentleys and big thousands upon thousands of dollars of yachts and big boats. And you ask the question, why? Well, Daniel, you can't make the assumption that everybody who owns nice things, an expensive car, a big boat, didn't work hard for it, or maybe even wasn't just treating themselves. What if one of the people who owned one of those cars, or a lot of those cars or boats, was just treating themselves? What if it was somebody who retired and decided to cash in on their payments? What if it was somebody who'd been working hard their entire life and decided, what the hell, I'll treat myself? Bottom line, I guess I'm just trying to say, don't assume the worst in people. Because there are a lot of people out there you're clumping in with the bad people. What I see in 
this area of California with the rich and even YouTubers. I'm not going to name names, obviously, but bigger size YouTubers who make thousands and thousands of dollars, if not millions, and yet they do nothing with their channel. They do nothing with their money. They do nothing with their wealth to invest or help or educate, but most of all, influence or inspire and help those less fortunate than them. I want to help people less fortunate than me, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be going to Africa, which I'm going to be leaving for it in May 16th for two weeks to build water wells and houses. Well, kind of an unnecessary reference considering you have made two seven minute long videos based around you going to Africa, but okay. And I'm paying it out of my own pocket, not because I want to be this, you know, rep rep reputable person, oh, I went to Africa and helped people. No, I don't want... I'm going that because I genu genuinely want to help people less fortunate than me who are struggling to survive and are happy just to have a drop of clean water. Mr. Epsion, if you don't want to come off like you want to be considered this reputable person, shut up about your volunteer work. Really, it comes off as just bragging at this point the more you bring it up every chance that you get. I mean, sure, you could say you're doing it all to help them and because you genuinely care, but when you keep bringing it up like you have, it makes it less and less convincing that you're truly doing volunteer work because you truly care about the cause. I do volunteer work, Daniel, but am I off bringing it up in specific in my videos every time I do it? No, of course not. And I would never compare myself to others like you are here with the rich people based on my volunteer work. Doing so kind of counteracts the good deeds, wouldn't you say? And really, who's to say that charity and volunteer work and overseas work are the ultimate defining and determining factors as to whether or not somebody is or isn't a good person? I mean, you make it seem like anybody who isn't involved with this stuff is instantly a greedy, selfish bastard. There are plenty of good people out there who aren't involved with volunteer work. And who's to say there aren't big YouTubers who do good deeds and community service? I've even heard that PewDiePie guy does it. But really, who are you to say that these rich people and these bigger YouTubers don't partake in charitable deeds? You didn't know those rich people you were discussing. For all you know, they could be the nicest people in existence who happen to be rich. But just don't go about flaunting their charity work like you do. And to be honest, I would prefer to be around a genuinely good person who keeps quiet and modest about their volunteer work, as opposed to the person constantly bringing it up and comparing themselves to others and how much of a better person you are because of it. Bottom line, Mr. Epsion, you could have been vague in this video and said, I want to help out people less fortunate than me, whether it be on YouTube or through community service or volunteer work, instead of going on about you going to Africa. Again. We get it, Daniel. You're a good person. I don't see that any place in Los Angeles. I don't see that any place in this hotel. I don't see this any place within the YouTube community, specifically large YouTubers who have everything set for them. Now Hold on, Mr. Epsion. YouTubers who have everything set for them? I don't know if you've noticed, Daniel, but your channel isn't exactly a suffering channel. You're not one of the millions of other people on YouTube who put time, effort, and money into each and every video hoping for a big break but can barely break the 10,000 subscriber mark. No, in fact, I see you as you saw that privileged teenage girl. Everything's set for them, only in the world of YouTube. Because let's be completely honest here, Repsion. You wouldn't be anywhere as close to where you are now without your promotions from The Amazing Atheist. You've even said before that you got 15,000 some subscribers alone off of the plug you got from him. I know a YouTuber, Silent Rob, who spent years working towards his goal of 10,000 subscribers. While people like you, Daniel, got plug after plug by a nearly 400k subscriber-based YouTuber. Sending your subscriber number flying past 10,000. There are YouTubers out there who would kill for just a fraction of your subscriber base. And going back to the beginning of the video, I noticed how you mentioned that Google paid for you to be in that hotel room you're in. How many other YouTubers out there have that opportunity to have an expensive hotel room paid for them? Not many, I could imagine. And yet, you still find something to complain about. So as far as YouTubers with everything set for them goes, I wouldn't talk about that like you're an exception, Daniel. You got a lot of popularity given to you. Is that saying you didn't work for it? Well, no. But does it make you look privileged compared to many other YouTubers? abso goddamn lootly The rich. If I ever become a place in my life where I am financially set, I'm going to invest the majority of my life and the majority of my funds doing overseas work, going to other countries, and helping people who have nothing. How do you know what you'll act like if you became rich, Daniel? How do you really know? 
Money changes people, Daniel, a lot. And from what you've said, you believe that with money, you'd have no issues. And that, to me, Daniel, is a very materialistic way of looking at things. The link down below in the description will take you to this video where these four or five Justin Bieber look-alike teens, or I should say children, because that's what they are, children in Denmark think it's a great idea to publicly masturbate comedically. Now here's the problem with this. I think masturbation is a healthy act. It should be done in the privacy of your home, own home. Guys, girls, masturbation's healthy. Science has proved this. The problem isn't that it's masturbation. The problem is that what they're doing in this video is sexual harassment. Because what they're doing is they're going up to young girls, dropping their pants, I mean in their underwear, okay? In their underwear, they then put a towel around them and then pretend to do this. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, you may be laughing by, by now, but it's not funny. Because it's not funny and I know I will be the minority here, and I know this video is getting heavily acclaimed and glorified as being hilarious, but I don't find this funny because it's one main thing. In this video, there's a particular part where this kid sits down to a baby, a mother and her baby, and he drops his pants, says a few words, says, oh, your baby's so cute, and then pretends to masturbate to a child. To a child. Because this is sick and perverted material that we are supposedly glorifying on YouTube the fact that someone can pretend to masturbate to a young child baby. The woman gets up, starts to walk away, and what does he do? He pretends to masturbate while following her. I'm sorry, buddy, but if you did this in the United States of America, you would be arrested within moments. Th that's This type of behavior in America, indecent exposure, even though I know you're not technically masturbating, you're pretending to masturbate for comedic purposes, is wrong and the fact that you're sexually harassing young girls and a baby I don't find it funny you're reinforcing the idea that you know sexual assaults you know it shouldn't be really taken lightly that it's it's perfectly acceptable this type of behavior no it's not if you find this as entertainment you are a sick twisted individual and I don't want I want nothing to do with you that's what it boils down to. To be honest, I think you're a selfish little brat. And you have used the fact that you went to Africa to help people as a point in arguments constantly. To which it makes me think, you didn't do it because you wanted to. You did it to make yourself look like a great person in the eyes of many that disagree or have a valid point against you. Matter of fact, I heard through the grapevine that you regretted going to Africa. Why? Did you hate helping people, or did you just hate the environment? I mean, did you expect it to be the Bahamas? I would have thought what was more on your mind was that you helped so many in need. But I guess not. That's only beneficial for you in an argument. I'm not selfish. I helped people in Africa. <laughs> I would have also suspected that since you were in such a rough third world country, that you'd actually take into consideration that the lifestyle you have isn't as bad as you make it out to be. But anyway, back to the matter at hand. The demonic hand. You were posting a couple of subliminal things on Twitter, and I thought they were about me. You also blocked me on Skype, and we had a back and forth through my friend Chicken Doodle Sauce and Queenie Martha. He made it obvious in our back and forth that he was, in fact, talking about me. And you seem to think that I somehow said things that we talked about in private in my video's comments. That's right, people. Repsion didn't even watch my video. He's so distraught because of the comments in the video. Stating that they confide things we've said in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Newsflash, Nimrod, those things I said were all publicly made by you. Not a private matter whatsoever. Many have thought about this. You can check in the comments of that video to make sure. People were saying they were happy they weren't the only ones thinking this. They were happy I spoke out about it. They felt the same exact way. None of what I said was confided. But you seem to think so. And that's really disappointing. You also seem to think I'm a backstabber too. Why? Because I'm supposedly a friend of yours that I can't criticize you? 
What the fuck is this nonsense? Onision and Seer 2.0? Give me a goddamn break. In our back and forth on Skype, I asked him to give me an example from which I can find it in the comments of my video. To which later, he says doing that would just be a waste of time. Even though him and I argued for like 20 to 30 minutes. Not much of a waste of time is it now? I have a feeling you're intimidated by me, Daniel, and you just hate being wrong. Well then again, we all do. But you have a huge problem admitting to a fault that you can't even stick to what you say about anything. You're so full of what you say, it's ridiculous. Just like in the post stating you're not suicidal when we all know you are. You even know you are. It's not a damn secret. I honestly think you're a bully. Not in the sense of physical, but verbal. See, you talk about many different topics. You also respond to many different people. So how am I, the demon from hell, any different? You've responded to Skull Ripper 4900. The videos he made weren't that good in my opinion, but that's just me. Then there's another video that somebody made about gay marriage in March. You're a little late to the party on that one, but you responded to that. So do you go only after channels or videos that are easy targets to you? But when somebody criticizes you and has a very valid argument against you, you ignore it, turn around, and walk away and keep doing your thing? That, to me, seems like a bully. Which, again, not in the sense of physical. It goes to show that Repsion can't pick on somebody his own size. Guaranteed, if I made a video that had a very big fallacy or something so stupid that he could respond to, he would. It's an easy target, right? The recent video I made? Not an easy target. Matter of fact, some guy 827 responded to you like a year ago, which he had some things that you could easily respond to because what he was saying were his assumptions based on how you were acting in your video. I don't blame him though for making a video like that. You play the victim card a lot. Just like you are now with this whole backstabber nonsense and how I confided some conversation we had. But then once some guy responded back to your response video, you tell him that you went 30 seconds in and noticed how angry he was and how much he was filled with hatred and that was why you didn't respond. Yet, his first response was no different. And his third response to you about girl gamers was another that somehow you avoided from responding to as well. Not an easy target for you, I'm guessing. You also posted this on your Skype. Even though I'm a fucking demon, never share your struggles with people, or demons, you think you know on the internet. Again, these so-called struggles of yours have been made public by you. It hasn't changed. I did not disclose any damn secrets. You stated you wanted to kill yourself in a public video and constantly on Tumblr. You've expressed yourself like you are trapped in a 15-year-old virgin's body with your sexual urges. Why would it be off-limits anyway, Daniel? You have the audacity to contact personal relatives of Onision's and disclose his marriage license. Although public domain, you have to pay a fee to see it. Addresses are public domain too, you know. Does that make it alright for me to disclose that information on the internet too? I'm sure I could find your social security as well online if I had to pay for it. Newsflash! Public domain doesn't make it justifiable to exploit to more of the public. If that were the case, you wouldn't be so upset when somebody did that to you on Encyclopedia Dramatica. It just wasn't the threat towards your nephew that got you upset. It was all of it in general. Don't dish it out if you're not willing to take it yourself. You also have this amazing idea on Tumblr where you told females to post pictures showing their bodies and you'll repost it for the public to see and it'll supposedly help their self-image issues. The body positive movement. Yay! Yeah, okay, sex-addicted wanker. Clearly those pictures of women in underwear aren't a way for you to have a wank fest every day and night. You're like that sleazy man pretending to be a doctor just so you can check a woman's tits. Absolutely pathetic. Even the girls that do it are pathetic because they're all like, I've never done this before. I have so many problems with my body. But then they'll proceed to post a picture of their body in underwear to a guy who has hundreds and maybe even thousands of followers on Tumblr. At this point, Daniel, I don't give two shits if you do commit suicide because I now know what kind of horrible human being you are. 
The kind that does good things here and there, not because you enjoy doing them, but because you want people to think how much of a good person you are, and how selfless and vulnerable and kind. But then behind the scenes, you're some sleazy, perverted, twisted, sick, immature kid. Hell, you even said yourself to me on Skype that you post all your depressing, sick, and twisted stuff that relates to you. You also stated in your exact words, I'm not a hero. I'm a villain. I think you're neither, but you claim to be a villain. What kind of villain goes to Africa to help those in need? What kind of villain has morals when it comes to some fat shaming week on Twitter? What kind of villain is against 4chan for starting the cut for Bieber nonsense? I rest my case. You're just a bad person trying to portray themselves as a good person to all the people. Mostly those girls. Then once you're proven to do wrong, you say, Oh, I'm the bad guy. Let me victimize myself too. <laughs> you also claim to be against slut shaming too. But it turns out the girl you want so bad is exactly what you're against. And yet you still promote her. Well that isn't much of a surprise. You'll do anything for some pussy since you plan on killing yourself if you don't find the love of your life. Even though while you're trying to find the love of your life, you're flirting with girls constantly on the internet. So even while you're so obsessed with this one girl, and say you wish she'd say some of the things that these girls compliment you for, there's many others in line that you keep messing with online. Great idea if you ever want to get a woman in your life, which is sarcasm in case you didn't know. New topic. Did you know Repsion helped somebody take their life? He gave them advice on how to do it. In his own words, supposedly the person was terminally ill, so with his own subjective point of view on suicide, he helped this person take their life. Which, by the way, if you check out his Ask Rep number 13 video, link in the description and annotated, he gives a few scenarios in which it is beneficial to commit suicide. It's a shame that most of them are ignorant, subjective, and very, very vague. Sure, if you're on your deathbed with a disease, and you're just in pain 24-7, and the only thing keeping you alive is some machine, the chances are very slim and maybe it's best for you to pull the plug now instead of continuing a torturous life. But then there's the whole idea of his in which you have exhausted yourself in trying to help yourself with medications, psychologists, therapists, etc. And none of it works. Just because it doesn't work now doesn't mean it won't work later in the future. Giving it five years is barely enough time to help your mental health. It can take a decade or more for things like that to work out. You may just have an epiphany. You may have thought of better options later down the line to better your life. As humans, you adapt to life. It's common. It's natural. Being impatient and saying after five years of trying, well, time to kill myself is retarded and selfish. But if you want to be the village idiot and do that to yourself, whatever, fine. You're not my problem in my personal life. I don't consider you a friend anymore, and I've come to the realization that you're this awful and selfish immature person that only cares about what you want in life and tries the goody two-shoes gimmick to make yourself look good, Mr. Villain. But you know what makes you for the most part this horrible person? The fact you promote and condone suicide to others, including your fans, with these ridiculous scenarios that are highly vague and subjective to the ignorant and impressionable young people that watch you. Bullshit takes time, damn it, and everybody knows it's not a damn walk in the park when it comes to life. If you think it takes a short amount of time to see the light at the end of the tunnel, guess again. Don't talk to this moron. Talk to somebody that actually knows what the fuck they're talking about as far as suicide. Gotta love this logic from Mr. Repsion where he responds to somebody about finding a cuddle buddy on Craigslist. His response, you'll die, but okay. How is what you do any different? You find these girls you like online and choose which one is a first place trophy in your eyes and then you try to meet them in person. Whether it be Tumblr, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Hashtag, Repsion Logic. And as for anybody saying this is not our business, hate to break it to you, buddy, but it's fair game in anybody's business. This is a public matter, you fucking idiot. 
It didn't stop Repsion from going after Onision, theists, feminists, and everything in the fucking sun. It certainly won't stop anybody else who are concerned about his behavior and what effect it may have on other people's behavior in life. This is no private matter. We're not going into Repsion's private personal diary. This business is what is actually serious business. Not just an overused meme to the masses of the internet. Now at this very moment, Repsion has his most recent posts by others hidden on his Facebook fan page. As much as people will try to justify this, that it's an option on the website, that's no justification in my book. He did it specifically to stop people from seeing all the factual evidence that shows he's a piece of crap from others. That's why he banned me from his fan page right away. You know what else there's options of on websites that condone censorship? Filing DMCA's and privacy complaints, which he has done as well. So since YouTube allows this type of feature, that makes it fine to do censorship on anybody, even if you're abusing the feature. Hate to break it to you, but it doesn't. One of the many things I hate about America is censorship. But in terms of just overall censorship, trying to censor this and saying that it shouldn't be shown is stupid. I just like you to think about this, that I think censorship is depriving the world of what really is in reality. Yeah, that's how the United States of America is ending up, and I don't like it. I'm not gonna support censorship. Are you? I hope not. So the first piece of criticism that people were saying to me is that number one, I Daniel Solzbach, Mr. Repsion, do not support freedom of speech. I don't really understand how people pulled this interpretation out of my video, but I guess me saying that you have no right to tell someone that they're fat and ugly, you have no right to tell someone that they shouldn't wear earrings or whatever, I guess some people thought that they shouldn't be able to voice their opinion. And this is further from the truth. I am in full support of freedom of speech. I am in support of you voicing your opinion, even if I disagree with it. This is a the privacy complaint I received. Dear blah blah blah, that's my number. This is to notify that you, we have received a privacy complaint from an individual regarding your content. HP, and that's the, the video that I put up about Daniel Reprison. The information reported us as violating privacy is, and some numbers, 011-1-32. One of the many things I hate about America is censorship. One of the many things I hate about America is censorship. But in terms of just overall censorship, trying to censor this and saying that it shouldn't be shown is stupid. I just like you to think about this, that I think censorship is depriving the world of what really is in reality. Yeah, that's how the United States of America is ending up. And I don't like it. I'm not going to support censorship. Are you? I hope not. So the first piece of criticism that people were saying to me is that number one, I, Daniel Solzbach, Mr. Repsion, do not support freedom of speech. I don't really understand how people pulled this interpretation out of my video, but I guess me saying that you have no right to tell someone that they're fat and ugly, you have no right to tell someone that they shouldn't wear earrings or whatever, I guess some people thought that they shouldn't be able to voice their opinion. And this is further from the truth. I am in full support of freedom of speech. I am in support of you voicing your opinion, even if I disagree with it. I'm responsible for your emotional um, well-being as of right now. No, I'm not. I want to make something really clear that I can block whoever I want and I use discretion on who I block on YouTube. I've never been a big fan of blocking, but I do not block people for simply criticizing me. I block people who simply make false accusations and spam the comment page. And you're commenting on my video saying, I have evidence that Mr. Reps- I mean, if people are really trying to annoy me, I will block them. It's just, just a matter of time. Just some more things to add to the resume of Repsion. 
after he told me he never watched my video, and that his closest friend told him the main concern, I told him that at the end of the day, you're still ignorant because you just didn't take six minutes of your time to watch a simple video. But it's okay to get bits and pieces. That's you being ignorant on something you could easily be informed. His response? Yep. Deal with it. This guy will dissect videos piece by piece and respond to what a person says in a video no matter if it's 12 minutes or 20 minutes or more. But he won't take six minutes of his time to watch a very civil and understanding video with a sincere concern for him with valid points to bring to the table. He even said he was enraged that there was a screenshot of a post he had on Tumblr in my video. A public fucking Tumblr post. That's what got him enraged enough. So watching the videos completely out of the line in his eyes, Repsion got so mad that I was being condescending towards him that he decided to say out of nowhere, the video Lesbian Linda, which had 75,000 views, which had MDA in it, is gone just for your information. An immature attempt to get a rise out of me that didn't work at all. Thinking that deleting a video you and I were in together doesn't do shit. The video was months old, and it barely got me any subscribers to begin with. I got more out of doing a full video collaboration with Undertaker Freak 1127 when he had probably about 10 to 15,000 subscribers at the time. And even if your video gave me a high amount of subscribers and views, I still wouldn't care because that doesn't matter as much to me as you think it does. Sure, it's great, but do I need you as an outlet to get up there? No. I'm not like Take Shot Action, I don't need you as an outlet to get up there. Plus, the video is old news. The amount of people that care about that lesbian Linda video is the amount that care about what my demonic ass has to say about Pringles. So, that's all I have to say. I decided to put all my eggs in one basket, put all of it on the table, as much as I could put. Whether or not this makes you realize how much of a piece of shit Repsion is, I still brought it to your attention, and hopefully those in denial soon have an epiphany on this guy. Don't be like Eternal Sunny D, blindly following the motherfucker, and being two-faced as fuck. Be like me, the demon from hell. This also doesn't mean you have to unfollow him, unsubscribe, dislike all his videos, flag him down, or call him out on his bullshit. This is just a way to inform all of you that this guy is nothing but a fraud. A wolf in sheep's clothing. A devil in disguise. Hey, don't laugh. But if you do like this video, maybe send it to Repsion so he could love it. If he files a privacy complaint or a DMCA on the video, then it goes to show he's against freedom of speech and that he's abusing the system that he's so damn against. It also proves that he only cares about when it's freedom of speech that is not criticizing him, with a valid point. His brother Onision would be so, so proud. Toodles! I'm not going to support censorship. Are you? I hope not.